Hey folks, this is Billy DKY, the truth seeker that simplifies and demystifies. This is going to be my UFC 113 post-fight commentary. We're going to start from the main fight and work down. From So the first fight we'll talk about is Leota Machida versus Shogun Rua. And, I mean, wow, the better man won, Shogun won. And really, if you looked at the first fight, which... I think I was blinded a little bit by the uh, hype of Machida and a plus because I think I personally liked him better. But you can sort of tell the first fight, Shogun had more spirit or more essence, whatever you want to call it. And wow, he just I, he did he did an exceptionally good job. And I think really for Machida, what he should have done I and mean, he was trying to implement. You know, basically Shogun showed that he could stand with Leota last time and actually punish him. And really, Leoto should have stuck with the game plan of taking Shogun down and trying to work stuff down there. But anyway, great job, Shogun. And I think what Shogun revealed about Leoto is that stiffness, that stiffness that I pointed out in on Into the Mind of Leoto Machida. It seems like Shogun has the ability to, to catch Leoto when he's in that m mental state and, and he just he takes advantage of it. So... Okay, so the next question is, who who does Shogun fight next? And I'm sitting there thinking, will Shogun be able to dominate 205? Because it seems like, from what I remember, he has a hard time with wrestlers like uh, Mark Coleman. I think over in the Pride days, and it seemed like he had a hot, rough time with him here in the, uh, in the UFC. So I don't really know what... You know, Shogun's going to be able to do if he faces somebody like Rashad Evans, he's a real good, great wrestler, and, and people like that. So, Shogun, I'm, I'm becoming a fan of Shogun, but he's still going to have to beat some more people. Plus, I mean, how, what's it going to be like with Shogun versus somebody like John Jones? Or it's just going to be interesting. I, I, in a way, I, I like it that Machida's not the champ because we're going to get to see a lot of different. You know, matchups where if Leota would have won, it start, might start getting a little boring with him being the champ. But, all in all, it's a good night. And, and I really like the way Shogun, once he realized Machida was out, he stopped hitting. He was very respectful, which I like that. And like I said, uh, Shogun's winning me over as a fan. So, good job, Shogun. Okay, next fight. Josh Koscheck. Uh, let me ask you this first. Who would you want to see Shogun fight next? Okay, next fight. Josh Koscheck versus Paul Daly. And th this fight was... The first round was a little bit better. I mean, I guess to start off with the first thing. I love... Well, I got all my notes here on my post-it board here, so... Okay. I love the not touching gloves. Josh Ch Goschek was just looking at the, refer or the referee, and as soon as he... Do you want to touch gloves? And the bow is turning... <laughs> So, it, it brings up some good drama, but there's also some negative consequences, which we've seen after the fight. Um, first round was pretty good. The fight was basically boring, but predictable. A little boring, but predictable with Josh Koscheck uh, obviously dominating the ground game. And, you know, after the fight, um, Paul Daly, I mean, that was just a blatant... I mean, it's really an assault and a battery in a way, but not really, you know. It's sort of in game of uh, hyped up emotions during a fight. But, I mean, you can't be doing that stuff, seriously. That's just not, it's not acceptable. It's, it's unsportsmanship conduct, and they're probably right for kicking him out. When somebody gets kicked out of the UFC, it doesn't mean they're going to be gone forever. So, I, he definitely needs to be gone for a year to teach him a lesson, and... Which and, and you can see Josh Kostek, he loved it, man. He's like, he's like, yes, I could ask for you, but I beat you in the ring and I beat you psychologically. And and this is really the first fight I've ever watched where I was actually rooting for Josh Kostek. Not that I hate Josh Kostek, but he does run that mouth and he's a little bit too confrontational. And so it, and Paul Davis is actually worse than him at it. So and this brings up another point with the uh, daily incident a little bit of wisdom. You'll have as much freedom as you can control yourself. And I first learned this by a dog. We have a dog here and it, it you know, when it misbehaves I have to put the I have to, you know, rein in the the how far it can go and stuff and she would get to do a lot more if she controlled herself, but and that's the same way with in humans and just basically in general, the more you can control yourself, the more freedom you'll have. 
Okay. So that's that. And uh, next fight, Joe. Oh, I guess the next thing is Josh Koscheck's going to be fighting GSP, which, anyway, we'll talk about that in another video. Joe Dirksen versus Tom Lawler. And the, the wisdom I want to give on that is you got to know how to finish a guy because Lawler had a really good chance of finishing Joe. But he really missed his opportunity, and I think a lot of guys get into practice and you know, and they're training, and they don't spend the time knowing how to finish a guy. You know, getting the correct distance, finding that killer, that killer punch or kick that's going to really put the damage on. Once you got a guy a little silly, don't do your normal punching. You got to, you got to think killer instinct. So, wanted to say that. Sam Stout versus Jeremy Stevens. Okay, and here it brings up a point. Even if you want, and there's a little wisdom from this fight, if you want to strike, you still need to take a guy down because you need to keep him guessing because once once he once he knows you're gonna all you're gonna do is stand up, then it takes a lot of worrying out of his mind, and then he can just you know load up on his punches better. But if you routinely take him down, and you start getting it into his head, he doesn't know when you do certain things if you're gonna. If you're going to take him down or you're going to strike and it really creates a more dynamic situation for you and keeps your opponent off off balance so it's like I say your opponent won't load up as much on his punches and it's just a lot of things and if you catch your opponent loading up too much take him down so I wanted to say that be dynamic another thing I noticed too that uh, I notice a lot of guys fight patterns like they, they train something over and over again in the gym and then he's just they just trying to repeat it. Even though opponent may not be responding in such a way that warrants that, that pattern, you got to be fighting the guy in front of you, not just following the pattern that you practice in the gym. And if and it, like once a guy gets onto your pattern that you're doing, you know, I think was that was doing a certain pattern. Then when you catch your guy catching on to your pattern, then you need another pattern that takes advantage of him catching on to it. And it's but again, it's about being dynamic. It's about thinking in the moment, and um, and it's the same thing in poker. If somebody catches, if I'm playing a pattern and somebody catches on to me, then I use that their knowledge of that pattern against them. So, good job, Jeremy. Next fight, Kimbo Slice versus Matt Matrione. I like uh, Matt's uh, walking in song, "Simple Man." I, you know. Kimbo was throwing some nice slams that first round, but I was in my in my mind. I was asking myself, but is is that using his energy wisely? Because it takes a lot of energy and spirit to throw somebody, and it, and it feels good. But you start losing your energy pretty quick, and it's like, how much damage are you really getting for the amount of energy you're ex, you're expelling? So, like I said, wow, nice round, and and really, it's a good job by Matt Matron. Even in the weigh-ins, you could tell that Matt was just he was just towered over Kimbo a little bit. Kimbo was backing up a little bit, so I was thinking, yeah, Matt's got the psychological advantage. I think Kimbo sort of knew it, too. So, really, I'd like to see Kimbo fight at 205, or put him in there with other light guys who are heavyweights, too, like maybe Randy Couture or something like that. But I think somebody said he got cut, so I don't, I don't want him to see him get cut. I mean, if they cut him, he'll probably go to strike force and fight some guys there. So I don't see I don't see Kimbo as being done at all, even though he's got a weak knee. Alan Belcher versus Patrick Cote, and again this goes back to what I was saying on the Sam Stout Jeremy Stevenson fight. You've got to mix it up, even if you all you're wanting to do is strike. You need to at least have the other guy questioning if you're going to take it down or not. And yeah, wow, that was a nice slam by Alan and. Uh, I like that nice little ground battle that Patrick, you know, Patrick and him were doing in the first round. And really, I mean, really, we, Patrick needs to do a lot more of that because he's always standing and it gets his opponent more options than he has and he needs to take stuff down occasionally. And it seemed like he would know that training with GSP as much as he does. But anyway, uh, Alan Belcher versus Anderson Silva. You know, like the old saying goes, "Be careful what you wish for; you just might get it." Don't don't get me wrong. I wish him the best of luck in that. But uh, again, be careful what you wish for. Oh, and, and something that's coming up. I've got a video coming up pretty soon. Into the mind of Dana White, which is going to be exceptionally good. I finally pieced him together, and so that'll be out shortly. Until the next video, later, folks.